Hello, hello. Hello, Sabina. Hi, Anna. I'm really, really happy to be here. And um, today is a very special day because uh, this is our first podcast um, for a Circle of Being. And I hope you've listened to the podcast with Molly, the introduction, which you can find on the YouTube channel, Circle of Being. And today we are here. It's winter time, so it's February. It's connected to the element of Earth. And uh, this is why I'm so happy to talk about this topics with Sabina. Yes, and actually, well, we'll be very hush-hush about it. The Celtic spring has already begun, but the weather has had spring-like tendencies, but today it's thrown us back to the winter, mm. which makes it perfect to oh, talk about yeah. winter and to cast our memories back into the deep and darkest time of winter. Mm. It's such a nice feeling when you say the, the, uh, we are already in the springtime mm -hmm. because I really need the feeling of spring and uh, this is because uh, in Berlin the color of the sky is gray. Gray, right? gray, gray. It uh, is quite horrific. And it's not the most beautiful uh, shade of grey, so I am so happy to hear about it more. <laughs> yes, well, well, we won't talk about spring, but um, just because um, the these podcasts that we're doing, they and related to the Project Circle of Being and also the Celtic um, calendars and the, the seasons. And the seasons of the Celts some are somewhat different to the start of the seasons in our regular calendar. Um, so it's really interesting to see. But um, you'll find out all about this, and we talked about this in our introduction as well. But, but, but what I would like to say is also, it's so nice because what we do is we are time-based. So it means it's, we are talking about the seasons and about the elements uh, exactly at this time when... As they happen. As they happen. So this is the special. And um, what's going on with the winter 2022? <laughs> what's going on with the winter 2022? Well, the lovely thing in winter is... and. Um, The inherent element of winter is earth. So we talk about the seasons and we talk about the inherent elements of the seasons. And um, if we remember the depths of winter, the darkness, the bare trees, nature seemingly dead, yeah, mm -hmm. all barren, all in hibernation, cold and actually a bit desolate. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing. Okay. But herein also lies some hope and solace because we know deep down that the cycle always continues. The circle of being always mm -hmm. continues. Everlasting. And the element of earth, which is inherent to the season of winter, offers us quite a lot. All we need to do is take nature's lead and accept the quietness. We become still and we go within. And mm -hmm. by going within, we suddenly find a cornucopia of wonderlands and, and fulfillment. And we, everything we need is actually within us. Mm. And by going within, it allows us to then step out again. Yeah. It's actually, winter is actually a perfect time to immerse in yourself and draw from the still, stillness, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I think also winter is so special and uh, this time is um, very, very special for me because um, the, this is the second circle of the circle of being and um, so I create paintings and writing texts for it and um, I'm more aware of this how much power is it to be in the present moment? And um, I see the new paintings, which I created this uh, in winter. And um, I have also a bridge to the last year because it was the second edition. 
so it feels so familiar it feels so safe and um, I see some patterns from last time I see the patterns also now but I have the possibility to change it to use what didn't work last year mm. I can change I can make some changes and it, um, it to have this bridge to 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 the last time it gives me only the feeling of stability and the feeling okay I have a base I have, you have the a new fo foundation yeah right? the, this yeah. is the foundation yeah. and this is the earth element and it gives so much certainty and it's um, it feels exactly okay this is the direction and it's um, now uh, you just carry on mm. yeah Because what we, what we do quite naturally in winter without really thinking about it is we retreat inside. We spend a lot more time inside. Yeah. Obviously, the days are super short. Um, darkness prevails. We sleep longer. We read much more. Well, I think nowadays reading stands for we spend a lot more time on social media mm. and we watch TV and Netflix, etc. And that's what we do unconsciously. Mm -hmm. But when we turn this around and we actually look what we could do consciously and how we could utilize the time so much more for our own benefits, like by embracing the quietude, we delve into the depths of ourselves, we find time to rebalance, to heal, to discover our own resilience, to find trust and to actually understand ourselves. And like you just mentioned, is you think back to the winter before this winter and you can then see you know what foundations we mm -hmm. build whether it's in your art or whether it's just within ourselves we look back and see by golly you know i i felt like that then and now i'm here and now all this has happened in between and i've arrived at a certain point And this is obviously also important mm -hmm. when we talk about the hero's journey and, and these cycles in which we repeat lessons which we might not have learned or we, we, we get confronted with things which we think, oh, I've been in this situation before, but now I'm looking at it from a total different angle. Yeah. And by, by really going deep within us in the winter time and, um, and finding the quietude, It, it's super helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's also very special because um, when, um, when we have this time and, um, and we are aware of what's going on, we feel um, somehow safe and uh, right in life. And... Um, This year is also uh, very special for me because um, I recently had my accident. So I tore uh, my Hellas tendon and um, it means for me a huge change. And it's normally I have a sporty and active life and now I'm, I'm not able to do you all. You have to be still. I have to be still. Yeah. I have to be still. I have to spend more time indoors and uh, I need, I learn also to be patient I can go in myself and uh, also it happens at this time when I started to paint my winter paintings so I was so excited because uh, these paintings came so powerful strong from from my inside mm. from And um, it's, yeah, it's because uh, they are paintings um, which I didn't manage to paint last year because the spring, tame, uh, spring came. And um, so since then I just majored these paintings in me. And this year I was so super excited. So mm. I start and... Short after this, I had this accident which grounded me even more. 
and uh, but I realized there is uh, so much power when uh, things come into being at the right moment and uh, when we are aware of it mm. so it was also to see what what does it mean for me and um, winter is, means trust, stability and practical thinking so I really um, went into me and just uh, was watching what's going on, what is what is the solution uh, how can I um, find a solution for my issue, for my problems for my issues um, and uh, how can I change things? How can I um, be become more innovative? So it's a great time. And also when we work indoor, I think everywhere we have a lot of possibilities. So mm. because of, um, of my situation, I started work with iPad, which is also um, gives me m more possibilities. To, to be grounded but also to to also to work to continue my project to stay on time to work with time it doesn't matter how the circumstances are mm. yeah because you're you normally when you paint you you paint basically with your whole body right you sit on the canvas you lie on the canvas you you your whole body becomes part and immersed in it. so it's not just you don't just hold a paintbrush but mm -hmm. your whole body is involved so obviously this has been a, a, a big change for you so but you know funnily enough um, winter the winter season is is big on turning points we have um, the beginning of winter we have the winter solstice we have Christmas and we have the new year and um, funnily enough, um, so the, the Celtic winter begins on the 31st of October. And what do we still to this day celebrate on the 31st of October? Mm. Let me think. Is it Halloween? It's Halloween. Really? Yes. So <laughs> and, can you imagine? And, and it's rooted in the Celtic it's, tradition? It's rooted in the pagan and Celtic tradition. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. And so for the Celts, and it was the beginning of winter, and also they celebrated the new year on the 31st of October and the 1st of November. So they always had their big, um, what we know. Obviously, this is just what we know of the Celts. We don't know many things about the Celts, but there's some oral traditions which have been kept and then written down um, in Ireland in the early Middle Ages. But in any case, so um, the Halloween was, um, we think it was originated in the USA because they still celebrate it so much more than we have done in the past. And then we thought it might, might have spilled from the US over to us, but no. The origin lies herein, in Europe, and um, so they celebrate the the communion between the dimensions of the people who have passed away to the spirit world and to so it's like that both worlds come together mm -hmm. on that evening. That's why nowadays we dress up like ghosts and ghouls or zombies or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, so that's the tradition lies within that the two worlds come together and is the best time to communicate between the two worlds of the uh, live world and of the people in the dead world. So that's the origin of Halloween. Um, and then we have uh, the winter solstice, which is obviously also of great importance and was always of great importance before we were, you know, we could really figure out the time and such. So, because when when we knew when the winter solstice took place, we knew oh, spring is coming, etc. Mm -hmm. So the Stonehenge in in England, the 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 big cornerstones mark the winter solstice, and so it was of immense importance, obviously, because then they knew when to plant the seeds, 
and when the new when light would come again and when the crops you sure, know when yeah. they could plant the crops etc etc yeah. and um and we've obviously um follow we don't celebrate the winter solstice that much nowadays i do i think it's the most important day of the, okay. of the whole year because i i know how, how do you celebrate how, well how? i just i just think oh it's the winter solstice and it makes me happy oh so, okay yeah, oh yeah. That, that's beautiful <laughs> yes. i'm very giddy and happy on that day so um and and then but nowadays we celebrate christmas more Mm -hmm. And um, we gather our loved ones, and we share gifts, and and so forth. And we sh hopefully are all merry. And you know, Christmas, we have all the candles, so we brighten up the darkness, and we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Obviously, in the Christian tradition, um, that is, and the sort of the journey goes on. Um, and interestingly. Christmas, like most Christian holidays, um, are placed on top or near of existing Celtic and pagan holidays. So the thinking was, especially um, this happened in Ireland, was that um, to convert people to another religion, so to convert the Celtic and the pagan traditions to Christian traditions, it's easier to keep The days so they kept celebrating Halloween or they kept the celebration of the winter solstice but they gave it another name so they said okay let's celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. um, so the people kept their days and they celebrated and that's why nowadays when we look at the Christian symbolism for Christmas we have a tree mm -hmm. and the, it's an evergreen tree so the evergreen tree signifies that nature cycle always continues. We put candles, we put baubles on the tree. Baubles are circles, circle of being. Yeah, that's incredible how all the things coming together and yes. and uh, just uh, going in cycles and connect with each other and make the huge big picture. Yes, it's, it's it's. I think it's quite, it is quite phenomenal actually, how um these these things take place, you know, and how we how these traditions just keep keep going. Like we we when we talk about Easter for spring, you know, it, it's it's the same. There's obviously so many mm -hmm. pagan and come to the bunny. It's obviously mm -hmm. which will be very exciting, but um but yes. So then there's the twelve nights that are celebrated in a more spiritual tradition between Christmas Eve and the 6th of January, the 12th night that refers to magical times. It's also the darkest time of the year. You, you, it's, you, know, you can make miracles happen. You go really deep to mm -hmm. then go forth. And, um, but, in, but instead of these 12 nights, you know, nowadays we more have that on New Year's Eve. We make New Year's resolutions. You know, it's such a big thing nowadays in our tradition, in our modern tradition. Oh, I'll go to the gym and everybody signs up to go to the gym and all that. You know, so, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, super interesting. But so Halloween comes from the Celtic tradition, the way we celebrate Christmas as well how we light up the darkness, it's all about, you know, how we go within ourselves to then go forth. Mm -hmm. It's incredible because so many things are just obvious and just uh, we don't even think about it. We Ooh. just accept it, how they are, and uh, but don't really think about the meaning and where does it come from. And it's so... I'm so grateful just to hear what you say because um, I like when I talk to somebody and just or somebody talk to me and I just get this this um, entire to somewhere else and you gave me so many uh, inputs and so many pictures in my mind yeah. and I just I was just traveling between the, the Celtic and uh, Pagan and now yeah. and it's uh, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. 
and and then you, you know we um Anna and I we've taken this also a step further and um we mentioned both earlier that the winter element is earth mm -hmm. and so in your paintings for winter obviously you use like the mountain a lot yeah yeah I, it starts uh with a mountain and it was um my intuition, I don't know, I just started to paint. I create my first matrix on the ground because in my painting, the circle of being is based on a matrix. It means I use my body I uh, and to create it, I have to bend down, I have to lie down, I, I'm on the floor or on the ground. And um, when you paint like this when I, I draw my body on the canvas and when you when you are uh, working like this you are very present in in the paintings because you feel your own body weight in the painting and um, you move completely differently because uh, you are you use your hands, you use your foods, and also um, your view is quite limited because your biggest distance to the painting or to the canvas is um, up to the how big you are. Mm. Or maybe when you have a lava or whatever, yeah. you can go higher. But actually it's um, very grounded and it's um, you really go in yourself and and um and yes i prefer to paint the mon mountains than the flat because um i love to push like, my limits again and again and um i love to feel the energy with uh, every up and downhill and um the feeling yeah, the imagination to be somewhere mm -hmm. there and to have the view around. It's like my first um, feeling uh, when I was in Glastonbury and where the whole idea started. And maybe because of that. But um, I'm really fascinated also what my body is capable on its own and how strong it's connected to the element of air at this time. I simply love to paint the mountains uh, on my matrix and um, have the feeling of uh, becoming one with nature. And inspired by winter time and element earth, I keep moving and explore every mountain. So it seems quite simple, but um, it's such a nice process because it's uh, like going up and down and um, it's very natural. And um, also when I put the colors of the canvas, it's it feels like uh, you have flowers and you put water on it mm. and uh, you know growth happen so it's exactly the same process you have something on the earth and uh, you you work on it and you know okay it's going to grow it's yeah. going to grow and it's so fascinating because you showed me earlier um, a, I've seen your paintings in real life and the mountain ones are, uh, are fabulous and also, what I found so fascinating, what you showed me earlier, is you had, um, you showed me how they began. So you showed mm. your body, you know, your body as the matrix, and yeah. from what, and then you built up until you reached the summit. And mm. what you just said right now, I found, I, I think links beautifully, and weirdly to your accident. So you said, you know, we all climb mountains mm. and. Um, they are our challenges, yeah. you know, and, and that, it, it, that it links nicely like to my thoughts or to the thoughts that Anna and I have about the element of earth. You know, it is the most encompassing element of all because everything around us and all other elements and of course ourselves, we come from earth mm -hmm. and we go back 
to us. Yeah. You know, and we must never forget, forget that. And um, everything, we live on this wonderful planet and it is, it is of such a, it is so that it sustains us. It sustains our life here and, and, and that is beautiful. And, you know, and we call it Mother Earth. And so it is the most comforting element in which we can really utilize the dark months to visualize ourselves snuggling deep down into Mother Earth and we slumber and we daydream and in our daydreams we receive, first of all we heal, we reflect on what has been and then we daydream about new adventures and challenges. Mm -hmm. Not, it, we don't think it all through but it's like little seeds that we send down into the earth of what could be coming to us. And so we dream of our ongoing journey and we do all this with such a deep trust and this is what you know we can develop during these during the winter is to really deepen our trust that we know all will be just how, how it has to be and when we take this time to retreat and to rest in earth you know to really become still and to really utilize sitting in the dark with just a lit candle and just daydream then we can emerge renewed and empowered and with new vigor we can skip into spring mm -hmm. yeah absolutely what it's also really interesting for us the air tones represent exactly what you said it's security and also also uh, material safety yeah and it's um, the brown tones have a rustic calming and balancing effect I think it's also like the the brown tones I really love them because they give this kind of harmony and purpose and self-worth and abundance mm. But for a long time, I thought they are quite old school and maybe a little bit boring. Mm. Uh, but no, I'm. every winter is different and every winter has something special. And I think it's always when you see the, for example, the colors, mm. the brown colors or the winter, whatever, in a context, in a new context. Yes. It's so refreshing. Yeah. And it's also so interesting now to see the color around us. And um, you see the trees, you see the nature. Yeah. and it's You see the structure. Yeah. You see the structure which is normally hidden. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and if it wouldn't be so bare and, and we wouldn't be able to notice when it's full yeah you know you need yeah. to see it bare yeah. in order to see it dressed as such mm. which is stunning and and it's the same for your paintings you know you see the the fundamental structure and then later on you see it in its fullness mm. yeah i think really what's uh, uh what i'm very surprised when we started um, to create the project, it was we were excited, yeah, yeah. because it's uh, such a sim. I say simple. It's basic, fundamental, uh, fundamental, elemental, uh, elemental yeah. uh, uh, topic. Uh, but you discover so mm. much beauty. Yes. It's like a treasure chest because yeah. you are here now, and you say, "Oh my God!" Yeah. And uh, now because. Of the second edition we have also the association and what you said you've have everything it's uh, really because of my accident and because of my uh, issues because i can move i can my life is completely different at the moment mm -hmm. i see how much power is it when you are working with the elements when you are aware of the seasons and yeah. of the time I've, I'm very surprised and also proud of myself because I 
during this time, this difficult time, I feel so powerful. Yeah. I'm so I have such a nice distance, and I'm doing my work. I live maybe differently, but I move forward, mm. and I'm grateful for every day because now, okay, it's winter time. Mm. I'm grateful I have everything what I need to create. I am grateful I can I can uh I can use what I have and what I don't have, what I don't need. I think about the elements or what what sometimes I need a little bit more air or yeah. I a little bit of more of water or fire or whatever. Yeah. And it gives such a power because actually it's such a compact mm. um, body when we are, when we are aware how the world uh, works function, yeah. or function we we are able to 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 do move mountains yeah we are able to move mountains <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah yes and um, we have created some cards and um we are now each going to pick a card. Ooh. They are also <laughs> in tune with the with the <laughs> elements, and we'll talk about them in depth um, in a later podcast. Um, so, um, for each element, we have created uh, eleven cards. So, Anna, from the earth element, just give me a number between one and eleven. Um, let's start with one. One. Unconditional love. Oh, that's beautiful. So, the card reads, Explore how easily you can unconditionally love yourself and others. And your affirmation is, I unconditionally love myself and others. Oh, thank that's you so much. Wonderful. It's read so well. That is really, really wonderful. But how is it, Sabina, when you have the cards, you can... Choose now in the winter time only no in winter or you no, can you can always water. you can oh, always okay. use them but um I think uh, well the idea was to create them in in harmony or in tangent with the with the elements mm -hmm. so we have eleven cards for winter for air for fire and for water mm -hmm. and if you want to in winter particularly work on the earth element then you can work with the earth cards mm -hmm. but in general they are affirmation cards and you can mix them up and you can ah. pull one per day and it might say to you oh, today you need a bit of a kick up the ass so you need a bit okay. of fire okay fire in hintern ah. Ah. fire in your ass <laughs> so it would be good for a monday yes <laughs> so um what's your card my card is number six and it's sustenance for the journey. Oh. So it's maintain a nourishing routine for mind, body and spirit. Mm -hmm. And my affirmation is I am healthy and I am vibrant. Mm. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much, Sabina. I'm Thank super you, excited because uh, uh, it's the first time and um, yeah, many more things to come. So watch this space. And enjoy the podcast and feel, thank you very much for being with us. Yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Speak soon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.